Hearing the rain on this roof is really nice, um, but the hail is a little startling. Hey guys, what's growing? It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. Hope you're doing well today. Um, I'm doing better today. Yesterday's doctor's appointment um, showed no cancer, so that is super, super <laughs> relieving. Uh, but I do have to go follow up with a bunch of other um, specialists to figure out what's going on, including an endocrinologist and a rheumatologist. So those are coming up, but I'm moving on uh, because now I can kind of breathe a sigh of relief over that. Today, um, in between rain, hail, and uh, tonight, snow, so crazy, uh, I'm gonna be starting, or beginning to start, my week eight seeds, because this box right here, those are the seeds I need to start just this week. Uh, and my bigger problem is, uh, and I've spent some time this morning uh, trying to reorganize here in the greenhouse, I, I need space. Um, I do have heat mat space, and for now, they only need to go on heat mats. They don't need light because, you know, they'll be just in seed form until they germinate. 50% uh, germination in the tray. I don't need to put them under the, under the lights, so I do have a little bit of time, but I have so much to start, so I wanted to share with you what I was going to start um, and uh, then get moving on this big project. I don't think I'll finish all of this today. I think I'll have to come out tomorrow uh, and do the rest, which it's okay. Uh, seed starting is actually quite fun, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, all right, so um, first things I'm starting, and some of these have photos and some of them don't. So um, these are uh, the first things I'm doing is aqualegia. This is um, also known as columbine and i have already a bunch in the um, cottage garden columbine are actually um, perennial here i don't know what the zones go down to let me see if this packet will say perennial in zones three through nine wow that's a huge range so um i have some seeds from geo seed and some from uh johnny's so i don't have photos of these but um aqualegia coral um um, McKenna's Giant Columbine Mix, Pink Petticoat. So those are three Columbine species. I like to start them and spread them around. They do um, self-sow a little bit, but they just offer such a pretty, pretty flower and they're very long lasting. I haven't used them for cuts because the stems aren't very long, but I could use them in small, um, small arrangements, short arrangements. I, I think they'd be fine. Starting more on the mages, uh, Dara. This is chocolate lace flower. So here's a, these are from uh, botanical interests, but I just love this flower. I, it's so cool. <laughs> um, beautiful in lots of different stages. So I'm starting more of that. Uh, starting balloon flower, also known as platycodone. Um, this is fairy snow, and this is a Baker Creek um, seed. So these guys, uh, perennial also in zones three through nine. That's crazy, right? That's a huge range. Starting some dill, bouquet dill, um, because it makes a really great greenery for bouquets. And starting some more hollyhock, something I still have not had success with. Hollyhocks are uh, perennial, but it, again, three through nine, but they are also biennial. So if you start hollyhock seeds this year, this is a uh, creme de cassis. I thought those were gorgeous. Uh, if you start them this year, then you'll only get the, uh, the green growth, the vegetative growth this year. Next year, they will flower for you. So um, then I have a selection of poppies. Again, I'm gonna keep trying with these. These are bread seed poppies. Um, and Shirley poppies, which I've already started. I had direct sown a bunch of these out of the farm already, so this is another batch. Um, I have, um, these are all from Florette. So I have lilac peony, frosted salmon, white frills, pink peony. Those are the, the bread seed poppies. And then I have amazing gray, which I've already started. These are Shirley poppies and mother of pearl. So then, Next up, more marigolds. Uh, I've already got marigolds growing. Uh, they're looking great. Um, 
they just they're so easy to germinate and they just grow really well but I sow successions of them because some of these are going to go in um, in my flower garden in a box kits that I sell. So week eight is a big week for me for seed starting because it's when I start all of my seedlings for the, like I said, the flower garden in a box and also my vegetable garden in a box um, kits. And then I also do a curated sunflower garden in a box. So I start all of these seedlings and then when they get bigger, I transplant them to four inch um, cow pots. These are completely compostable pots made from cow manure they do not smell bad <laughs> but they're wonderful and then people can just plant them directly in their garden so they when they do pick up their their kits from me after they purchase them uh, in advance um, they will have seedlings that are ready to go in the garden they've already been hardened off they're in cow pots so they could either take them out of those cow pots or they could just plant them directly in the garden in those pots uh, which will act as fertilizer for the garden so I do some of these marigolds specifically for that like this one lemon drop um, this is great for containers. It's, it's cute, it's tiny, um, and it's prolific. And then I have a new one that I haven't grown yet. This one's called Orange Hawaii. So I'll be starting those as well. Starting some more chamomile. Um, this is called Zlatilan. I already have a bunch of these out in the, um, in the perennial beds at the farm. Um, but I'm going to start some more uh, so that I can have them here in my herb garden uh, because I just love it as an herb. Oh, one more marigold. Sorry, this was out of order. It's a big, big, big bag. Uh, this is uh, Cracker Jack Mary Helen. So now we're moving on to the the seedlings for the the three kits that I'm going to be selling and actually need to start um, <laughs> I need to start marketing for those now uh, because even though I'll start a ton and I'll put a lot of these in my own garden, it helps if I know how many people so that I know how many seedlings uh, everybody's going to get. So um, starting with cucumbers, I have photos for some of these and some of them I don't. Um, these are from Johnny's uh, hybrid greenhouse cucumber called Katrina. Um, hybrid pickling cucumber called Max Pack. Another pickling cucumber, Little Leaf. Um, this one was a was a free seed from Baker Creek. It's um, Beat Alpha cucumber. Apparently, it's really popular in the Mediterranean. I have uh, Piccolino, which is another uh, greenhouse cucumber, N uh, Nokia, and then this one, Dragon's Egg. I hope it tastes good. It's a Croatian heirloom. Um, I love cucumbers. I love them, love them, love them. I could eat them nonstop. Um, they're so yummy to me. I don't know why. Some people really hate them. My kids are not fans, but I love them. So I grow a lot of them. Um, okay, so then moving into lettuces and greens, I have Oceanside spinach and uh, romaine from Johnny's. There's salad bowl blend here. This is um, uh, botanical interests. From Renee's garden, I have Patty's Choice. It's a bib lettuce. So some of these are head lettuce and some of these are leaf lettuces that you could, you know, just pull off individual. And we also have some, some um, Asian greens. This one is a brassica called Old Tokyo Komatsuna. Um, so those will be yummy. Uh, there's a pak choy, another romaine called Monte Carlo. This one's really yummy. I've grown that for a couple years now. We have, um, peppermint stick Swiss chard. Oh, love Swiss chard. Actually, the whole family loves Swiss chard. Uh, and then we have celebration blend Swiss chard. What we do is we strip the leaves, chop up the stems, saute the stems with uh in some olive oil with um garlic and a little bit of lemon juice and then add chop up the leaves and add them at the last minute just to kind of wilt them so good okay uh then i have a radicchio called palo rosa another lettuce called a little gem it's just a mini romaine and then moving into some um well, I also have arugula, baby arugula. I, I never stop growing arugula. It's so good. Um, sorrel, uh, which is, is a green, but sometimes people use it as an herb. 
And speaking of herbs, I'm gonna get into those in a minute. Where did I put my herbs? Oh, they're up here, okay. So moving on to peppers, and we've got a lot of them. So I've already started a couple of peppers um, earlier. I have them over here. Let's see which varieties they are. Um, Etuda and Carmen, these are both a sweet pepper. And, and these got kind of wilty while we were gone. So they're, they're looking okay, but they could be better. Uh, and this one is Black Hungarian, which you could tell, look at the really dark um, leaves here. And Craig's Grande Jalapeno. These are super yummy. Okay, so those are some hotter peppers. And these are going to stay, they're on heat uh, still because peppers really need heat to germinate and to continue to grow. But they're also under the lights because they have germinated, so. Okay, so in addition to those, which are, are three weeks further along, uh, I also have Shishimai hot peppers, uh, Flavor Burst hybrid bell pepper, Flaming Flare hot peppers, those were yummy last year, and Red Flame hot peppers, so I got those two confused, uh, Jedi hot pepper, which is kind of like, it looks like a, um, it looks like a jalapeno. Um, I made couple candy with them last year. And uh, shishitos. These say sweet peppers, but most of the shishitos I grew from this packet last year were hot and spicy. So here's a picture of the uh, Greg's um, Grande Jalapeno. I'm going to start more of those. Here's what the Black Hungarian looks like. And I'm going to start more of these too. These are mildly hot. So they're kind of probably, I, I, they'll be interesting to put in with cowboy candy to kind of chill it out a little bit so it's not too spicy. Um, Etiuda is the sweet bell pepper I've already started. I'm going to start some more of those. And then this is a new one for me, but I know a lot of people love this one and grow it all the time. This is Sugar Rush Peach. And also a sweet chocolate pepper. All right, moving on to tomatoes. Uh, today I am starting uh, some that I grew last year. These are Moskvich. Um, that's an heirloom tomato. These are from Johnny's. So they don't have any photos for you. Sorry. Uh, Sunrise Bumblebee. Uh, I grew those last year too. And Amish Paste, which a lot of us know about. Uh, there's, then there's Orange Hat. I grew this last year. So cute. Very productive. And they really are perfect for... Um, containers, which is great because some of the folks who get my vegetable garden in a box have just a balcony or a tiny back porch and they want to be able to grow things. So I give them container options so that um, they can still have produce from their home, uh, but that doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And then I have a Tamarillo here, which I have not yet grown, um, although this package looks like I opened it. So let's see, when was this packed? Uh, yes, I got it last year. Um, so either I didn't, it didn't germinate for me or I don't know, something happened. Okay, uh, more tomatoes. I have a Determinant Celebrity Plus, um, Sweetie Pole Tomato, really cute. Sun Gold, which lots of us are familiar with. And an Indigo Blue Chocolate. I thought that was gorgeous really curious to see what that's going to be like and then apparently i only have uh i have a climbing zucchini here i know i'm starting more squashes but they're going to be started later um so i'm not sure why this one is in here i'm going to double check on my uh on my spreadsheet and see if this was accidentally put into week eight so i have a kapoor tulsi basil uh, this is from a company called Grow Organic, and you're going to hear a lot more about these guys from me soon. Um, really great company. I'll tell you all about their my wonderful interactions with them shortly. I have a big order coming from them of, of uh, fruit trees um, soon. And bouquet dill, and more cilantro, or coriander. You guys know about those. I, I just love it. Um, some people say it tastes like soap. Apparently that's one of those DNA things. It's like, you know, like detached ear lobes or whatever, or can you curl your tongue? It's the same kind of thing. Some people genetically can't stand the taste of, um, cilantro, say it tastes like soap and others love it. 
everybody in my family, we love it. <laughs> so I continue to grow it. Uh, I have a couple types of basil here. I have a San Remo and Pesto Party. Um, these are seeds from Burpee. They're really good. These are both Genovese basils and um, they make really pretty plants and super yummy. Uh, leaves. And then I have a sweet Thai Asian basil, um, another Genovese basil from um, Johnny's, more cilantro, and then uh, of course lemon balm, my one of my favorite favorite herbs which I've already got growing uh, but I'm going to add more and also grow these for my my clients too. Uh, I have some um, seeds that I saved and so all they say is thyme and organic sage so I'm not sure what the variety variety was but I have a summertime from Johnny's and an English thyme which I already have growing out there and then an Italian aromatic sage a culinary sage and fine leaf chives and then finally sweet marjoram you know, it's so funny, marjoram is one of those herbs that I never think about using, but then come the holidays, we actually need marjoram for the turkey, for stuffing, etc. So I decided this is, this is silly, I'm just going to grow it. Okay, and then finally, sunflowers. Uh, I have a lot here because in addition to starting my weekly succession of sunflowers that are like the single stem big ones that I will grow and cut for bouquets. I also have a whole bunch for our curated sunflower collection clients. Um, so I'm still starting pro cut um, white night. That's still uh, what's going in the in the ground for the cuts. But then I also have um, Gypsy Charmer. These are all from Sunflower Selections. Uh, let's see, Lemony Claire. Little Becca, Orange Hobbit, which is this really wonderful tiny little sunflower that's great for like the front of borders because it's real short and prolific. Uh, lemon Sorbet, Junior, which is a great container sunflower, and Golden Cheer. And all of those are multi-stem sunflowers. So they're not single stem, they're multi-stem. So I will get all of these started over the next two days. Uh, get everything that needs to be on heat on heat and start moving some things around in the greenhouse. I think um, on Saturday when we're supposed to have a break in the weather, uh, you'll see it's getting sunny, shady, sunny, shady. That's because we're having these bands of the storm coming through. It's this big circular um, storm off the coast uh, coming from Canada. So that's why we're getting super cold temperatures and we're getting snow tonight. And they actually are saying potentially accumulation. Uh, above 500 feet. We're at 700 feet here at my house. So uh, I don't think it's going to be like a lot of accumulation, but it'll be interesting to see. <laughs> so um, sweet peas. I think I'm going to take these guys out to the farm on Saturday so I can make the save room under these lights for more seedlings that need to go under there um, soon. And I hope that I'm going to have enough space on the heat mats. I think I will for all of these seedlings that I need to start. So uh, I'm going to get moving on that. Once I get them all um, done, I guess I'll show you where I'm at and um, we'll talk about next steps. It's only been a few minutes since I told you I was going to start get starting on those seedlings and it's hailing. <laughs> Can you hear that? So I'm glad I'm out here and not outside. Um, it's about to get real loud in here, I think. But there's something kind of fun about that. Hearing the rain on this roof is really nice, um, but the hail is a little startling. Sometimes when we get hail here, it comes down like, you know, torrential, and then we'll have it all over the ground and it'll look like it snowed and then of course it'll melt and all go away so we'll see we're supposed to get thunderstorms today too so got really crazy weather <laughs> well it took literally two hours <laughs> for me to label all of the trays i haven't even started making soil blocks yet so uh take a look um this is what i'm going to be uh, putting soil blocks in and then the bigger seeds the cucumbers are actually going into six packs because those cucumber seeds are just too big for a three-quarter inch soil block I could make two inch soil blocks but that uses a lot of blocking mix actually more than a six pack cell does and so um, I'll just use the six pack cells that I already have so here's what I've got 
I don't even know, I need to go eat lunch. I don't know how much actual seed starting I'll get done today, but at least all the prep work is done. So for the flower farm, I use these big giant trays here. Um, as you've seen before, they're, they're perforated trays and they, they sit inside a 1020 tray that's solid so I can water them and um, you know, this is for when I'm starting multiple blocks of the same thing. However, for things that I'm doing a lot less um, numbers of, I will put them on these trays or the um, styrofoam trays. So uh, basically everything needs to get labeled um, and then I put the seeds that I'm going to start in the trays. So you can see I've got a lot here. This is just a lot, a lot, a lot to start. Um, I mean, it's kind of relaxing. I've got a book playing while I'm doing it, but those are the soil block trays. Now over here are the trays for the cucumbers. So these are kind of nice because they're actually nine cells. Um, and so the cucumbers are going in the nine cells. I'll do one um, nine cell in this tray of sunflowers. Uh, these are old tags. I had to write the new ones there. Uh, Got to reuse everything you can. And then this has a few nine cell trays and then most of them are six. And so these are the sunflowers for the curated sunflower collection kit that I sell. Um, so those will get filled with soil. This will be pretty easy and fast. I do want to um, make the soil blocks first because I only have that much blocking mix left. And um, I want to make sure I can get all the soil blocks made before I fill these uh, so that I don't run out of soil. Um, I can always go and buy some more. Um, this is also much more forgiving. This, I, the soil I can use to start sunflowers, I can use just regular potting mix, which I do have. But soil blocking mix is kind of, of precious because it's very specific recipe. So I don't want to waste that and use it in these cells unless I have to. And you can see I've just tried to cram as much as I could on each shelf. Uh, the sweet peas will go to the farm and then that whole shelf will be ready for um, stuff that needs to go under lights which will be these guys once they get more germinated more germination going um, but i have heat mat there heat mat there heat mat there and one here that i can use for the orange little trays and then i have um, one spot over there that currently has another tray full of six packs which i don't need now i'll just put this away to use for another time but this spot i can put um one of these six pack trays on i'll do the cucumber one because the sunflowers don't actually need the heat to start germination but the cucumbers definitely will so uh, that will go right here and then like i said once the sweet peas are gone and these guys get more germinated um on this side because these are the zinnias i'll move them under the lights here and that will open up more space on a heat mat because i have more seeds to start so the next couple weeks, 9 through 12, weeks 9 through 12, are mostly going to be just um, sunflower successions. I mean, there's a few other things here and there that are going to get started, like some of the zucchini and stuff like that. But week 13 is another really big seed starting time. However, at that point, all of these lettuces and stuff will be out in the garden and a lot of other stuff will be gone. So things will be cycling through and I'll have more space in here. Um, and like I said, I can always take stuff that doesn't need heat um, that has already germinated and is on its way out to the farm because I have a huge table out there that they can sit in the greenhouse and it'll be warm enough in there and they'll get plenty of light. So I do have space to move but this greenhouse because it is um mostly sealed i mean it's got ventilation in it but it's it doesn't have broken panes of glass like the like the greenhouse at the farm um this greenhouse i can control the temperature much better in it is kind of like the nursery an incubator so to speak uh to keep everything um you know warm help everything get started whereas out at the greenhouse uh at the farm it's really more of like a holding place um, where things just kind of sit and wait until they're ready to go in the ground or in the case of the seedling sale get picked up by customers so that's going to be it for me today i need to go eat lunch and then come back out here and just start putting in seeds uh, keep listening to my book and um, 
see how far I can get today. And then tomorrow I'll be back out again. I am so happy that I have this heater out here because it's, you know, like 38 degrees outside um, right now, very cold. But in here it's a comfortable 62 Fahrenheit, uh, 15 Celsius. So uh, very comfortable in here. I'm so grateful for this heater. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you guys have a wonderful time in your garden and uh, maybe you're starting some seeds too. I know it's still early. It's February. So, you know, people in zones probably seven and below aren't even thinking about that yet. Uh, but if you are, I hope you have fun and I will see you in the next one. Bye.